Today, we're going to look at the silk reeling chigun. Now, silk reeling chigun, it looks lovely, it's lovely to do. It's got a beautiful story behind it. Take all of that with a little bit of a pinch of salt. This chigun, now chigun itself, chigun is energy work. Now, something that is called a gung in Chinese is something it's work that is done over a long period of time that's refined into something that becomes worthy. Like Gong Fu, something that takes a long time to work at and in the end you become very, very adept at it and it enriches your life. So Qi Gong is Qi work, but work that builds and develops over time and it's something that's really valuable. So this Silk reeling qigong. The idea is the silk that comes out of a silkworm, if you pull it from the cocoon, it has to be drawn out at one long continuous speed. You go too quickly, it's going to break. You pull it too slowly, the strand starts to have all sorts of different types of thickness to it, starts to sag down, there's no quality to it. Only when it's drawn from the cocoon at one slow continuous speed is the silk thread of any real quality. So silk really movements are the movements such as you see in Tai Chi where it is slow and continuous. So all of Tai Chi is silk really, is in essence a silk really exercise. Every part of every movement that you do, whether it's with the hands or the feet or whatever, everything is moving simultaneously at the same relative speed so that everything that you do comes together and is never, never broken. You go from the end of one move to the beginning of another move. So everything just continues at the same nice slow speed. So, Tai Chi is silk reeling anyway, but silk reeling Qigong, these exercises are to develop your Qi. Now, traditionally they say that these came from the Yellow Emperor of China. Now, the Yellow Emperor of China lived nearly 3000 BC, 2700 odd BC, they say, and he is accredited with inventing everything from donuts to double glazing that goes in China's Chinese culture. Acupuncture, Taoism, everything, they say, oh, that's the Yellow Emperor. We invented that, the Yellow Emperor. Whether it's true or not, I have no idea, because all of these things, as you can imagine, get turned into myth and story. They say that the Yellow Emperor's wife actually invented silk reeling, and he went to see why her workers were so healthy in the way that they had to lay the threads over the rods to dry and everything had these kinds of movements and he noticed that because they were so healthy he developed a series of exercises like he invented absolutely everything in the world and that became the silk reeling chigun whether that's true or not is neither here nor there but what is true is the type of exercise is magnificent for building your chi so i'm not going to talk about any history where it came from someone's going to type in or it actually comes from this, that or the other, I'm not that interested to be honest with you because the people who tend to tell you all of the facts about Tai Chi and Qigong, you get them on the map, they can't do anything. So be a doer, don't be a talker. This is how the Qigong actually works. Now, if you want your Qi to manifest itself through the Qi channels of your body, it has to work its way through and working its way through involves you loosening it from your centre and causing it to come out in a lot of undulating ripples through your chi channels. Now, at the beginning, and this is, these are really, really big subjects that I'm really just glossing over, but I'd really like to make things simple and straightforward so that anyone can understand them, not just use lots of Chinese terms so that only the special people can get it, but really try and put it in a way that you can understand. Now, if I'm going to move my chi along my arm, my natural energy, I have to move it in a way that I don't use my muscles. So one of the ways that you learn at the beginning is by isolating your waist from your hips, and this takes years and years and years to learn. And the sideways movements cause the chi to snake its way through the chi channels. Now as well as that, as well as that, it also coils. 
So it coils as it comes through, and this gives you the real internal movement of Tai Chi. So where you may apparently see someone's arms raise and lift up into the air somehow, they will in fact be spiraling as they're moving to work the chi through the chi channels. This has an incredible effect in terms of martial arts on somebody else, and it has an incredible effect on your chi. So the movements that you use in the silk reeling not only turn the waves from side to side and cause the sympathetic movement through the body to move in the opposite direction from the waist. Don't think about it, you'll end up doing it without thinking about it because you've got a body and your body knows how to use its energy, so don't try and make it happen because that will block it. But they also, in a way, spiral as well. Now, this looks complicated. You start by moving and your chi, as you practice thousands of times, finds a way, it finds its way along, and it starts to learn how it really should move. So don't look at it at the beginning and say, I'm not, I'm not doing exactly the same. Just enjoy the feeling of the movement, because your chi doesn't need you to have the knowledge to move its way through the channels. Just a little movement will start it to move, and the more you do correct movement, the correct way, as often as you can, the more the chi learns these little roots through your body and it will find its way. You spend, when you're training in martial arts involving chi, internal martial arts, what tends to happen is you spend the first 20 years looking for your chi. And everyone's saying, Where's, have you found your chi? Have you, have, you, have you felt your chi? Oh yes, oh no, I'm not sure if I have. And there's this big doubt about what your chi is, this internal energy you're supposed to feel it like a pulsing or a burning or an itching or a whatever it is then you realize over years what you've been doing is you have been discovering your chi all of the time and if you keep practicing keep practicing keep practicing not talking but practicing you'll discover after years and years that your chi suddenly you are understanding that you're feeling how your chi works within your body then you spend the rest of your lifetime in your training trying to stop it being blocked. So when you understand how it moves by doing the work, it's the only way you do it, by doing the work constantly, day after day, week after week, year after year, repeating things tens of thousands of times. When you've put the work in, then your chi starts to flow through your body and you feel where it is, and you understand that you could move your arms over here, but you couldn't move them like that because your chi would be blocked. And your, your chi starts to tell you how you should move, but it's not talking about it that gets it done. It's doing it that gets it done. Now, these silk reeling exercises, silk reeling, and the silk actually comes out in a spiral as well. That's why it's used as the silk reeling as well. Now, there are eight traditional silk reeling exercises that we're going to do for you. They've got all kinds of strange esoteric names, which I may or may not remember as I'm going through. The heavenly warrior's smooth stroke to, to the rear and indulging oneself in torrents without fear and coming up on the source and this and that and the other. Turning the body in a whirling rainbow, all of these lovely names. It's not about the names not about the names. These are the beginning of silk reeling. We're going to show you more exercises as we go along that involve in turning the body in different ways to silk reel the energy through. These are the, if you like, the basic ones, but the basic ones of any exercise, of any discipline, they're the ones that you really want to get hold of. They're the ones when you've learned everything you go back to. Anyone will tell you Tai Chi the most the move, the move that people will be the most dissatisfied with in their entire life will be probably the grand opening because it contains everything that is yin and everything that's yang. And once you understand what everything should be, you, then you start to see the imperfections of what you're doing. So these, while they are in a way beginner's exercises, they are the ones that you should do when you've been doing it for years and years and years and years and years. So, we're going to take our way through these eight exercises. I'm going to take quite 
a big wide low stance if you've got knee problems come up a little higher listen to your body don't move outside of your range of movement and you're less likely to block your chi it's as simple as that listen to what your body does in essence your hands need to be led by your center and then after a while your center loosens to spiral the energy through but it takes time you can't do anything without doing it so let's start let's start with the chi go and get yourself up get yourself standing let's take the feet out nice and wide I'm going to put my left hand just at the top of my thigh, so not up here on the hip, just above the thigh. And I'm going to circle the right arm. And you can just follow me here. I'll mirror this video so that you can follow in front of me. And we'll go on about this pace. It can be done slower. It can be done faster. But here, just regulate your breath. If I make a bit of noise with my breath while I'm doing it, just a... Just to show you the kind of speed of the breath and you clear your mind as you're doing it. And then we're going to change arms, so we bring this one down, keep it moving a little one, a little as we start to turn the left. You'll see that the fingers are trailing behind the direction of movement. They're trailing behind, they're trailing behind, they're trailing behind, because if they led, it will block my chi at the elbow. So trail behind. Use the legs. I'm shifting the weight from one leg to another. I'm turning my waist above. That's what's really generating the force. I'm keeping my head upright, keeping my breath smooth, and keeping my mind clear. So now we're going to involve both hands. The wind rises and the clouds surge. I move the weight from one to another. As I move across, you'll see that one hand is above the other. So those of you that are familiar with cloud hands, wave hands like clouds, this is a very similar movement to it. Just keep moving, smooth as silk, unbroken movement, never starting, never stopping. After you've done this exercise a few times with me gabbling on, you can turn the sound down and just follow. Then once you've learnt it on your own, you can do it as many times as you wish. So now we're going to change and bring one leg forwards and one leg behind. So I'm going to shift my right leg back and take the left leg forwards, circling down and pulling back. And this is the Heavenly Warrior's smooth stroke to the rear. Don't worry about it, what it's called. Drag your arms through water. Drift them over the top. The weight comes forwards, the waist turns, the weight comes backwards. Try not to break your movement too much like this, even though it might in some ways make you feel good. You might well be blocking your chi if you're just indulging yourself too much. So we're going to change legs. I'm going to bring this left foot back, bring the right foot forwards, then I'm going to come this way. This breath is still slow and smooth. Try to keep all of the joints of the legs under control. You can see that I'm pushing my knees over my toes, my feet are flat. I've got that shoulder width stance that we use in the Tai Chi. A lovely, 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 soft, smooth movement to do. Very, very good for your health. Now we're going to bring the left foot in front again. So I'll take the right foot back, take the left foot forward. So I'll put my right hand on my hip and I'm going to circle this arm in front of me. There. So this is where we're running our fingers through the mane of the divine steed as it gallops past. I've shown this in various different ways in the class. Today we're 
looping it in front of the body like this, but feel yourself drag that arm as you bring the weight backwards and forwards. Circling it in front of the body, you've got to keep that lazy feeling through the elbow. See that? It's almost like a propeller with the elbow staying in, so you're not turning your elbow around like this, you're dragging it. That's one of the things that takes a long time to master. So we're going to change legs, step the, the left back, take the right forwards, and we come here. Minds are coming in front. If you find yours comes more forwards and backwards, neither here nor there, you're still training your chi. Have less of a desire to be right intellectually, more of a desire to be correct physically. Run your fingers through. Then we're going to bring the feet up parallel with each other. We're going to gather in. Indulging oneself in torrents without fear. Gather in. Gather in, I'll turn sideways a bit so you can just see this a little bit. Pulling in, keeping the elbows low, never lift the elbows up in the air. Keep the shoulders relaxed, drawing in towards yourself, turning the waist behind, keeping the joints under control. next one I'm going to do would be before this one. I've changed its position. It doesn't really matter. Don't really make it matter. Now we're going to draw the right foot back, step forwards with the left. As I draw back, I bring my hands up. I bring the foot forwards, I come forwards and push. So I slip back and forwards. Back and forwards. This is called the startling waves crash on the shore, here and here. Back, the back foot cushions, forwards the front leg cushions. So we change legs, you step back with the left, come forwards with the right, back with the left, forwards with the right, slip back, cushion the weight carefully, come forwards, don't overextend past the knee, Look after your body, look after your joints, but feel it powerfully. One more. Then draw yourself into a neutral position. And left hand on top of the right, move it across to your right, then split right hand on top of the left, move it over to your left, then split. Like the yin-yang sign is circular with a curve in the center. Here. They say this is like grabbing hold of the earth and splitting it in two. It's the essence of dividing energy, of splitting. You see this in a white crane spreads its wings in Tai Chi. Here I do tend to breathe in and out. A little more because it's a little more natural for the energy. You'll find that this is difficult to follow the first few times, then look at the movement behind the movement how it's being developed from the legs, changing in the waist, 
finally expressing itself out into the hands. And we're going to come up to our last part here. Take the right arm back, pull and push, recoiling the body into a whirling rainbow, they call it. You'll see this is like your repulse monkey in your Tai Chi. The essence of pulling and pushing, straightforward yin and yang. If you're going to understand this in terms of physical energy, you would be wise to note that the pulling hand is much more important than the pushing. The hand that's receiving much more important than the hand which is issuing. So we're just coming towards the end of this little silk red in qigong routine where we're going to start to smooth everything out. So bring the hands up. Breathe out, push down again. Again. One more. Stand with the eyes closed. Let the chi settle down. Let yourself settle down. Do this two, three, four times a day. Do the other videos. Work your way up. Increase your skill. Let your eyes open. Build on your work. This is something you can do at home. Something that's going to keep you healthy, genuinely, genuinely, it's going to keep you really healthy, keep you happy. It's a proper, genuine exercise, great for your internal health. Be very careful with a lot of these exercises that I see being done out there at the moment online. You don't have the all of the emergency services and the physios out there as much as normal, so you start putting your knees under a lot of stress and busting your joints around, you get yourself injured, you're going to have to deal with it yourself. So try to stick with things that are going to be safe, things that are going to be good for you, not just for building the muscles, but good for building your internal strength, your health, your vitality, and your happiness. So have a lovely day out there today, everyone. Be good to each other, and we'll see you at the next class. Very well done. Good work.